All right. Hello, 14ers, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is July 27th, 2020. And uh, I'm sure you guys are, <laughs> are somewhat as, uh, as tense as I am. We are coming into a, a period of time in all of human history that um, will have seen nothing like it before. We're going to go through, through some things, um, kind of other things that I wanted to talk about in relation to the last video. Uh, we're going to talk about other things um, in relation to uh, seeing this count and and what we could be looking at during these 50 days. And we're going to get into a little bit. I'm not going to play the video. You guys couldn't hear it very well. Um, but I finally, I said I was going to go through the transcript of it. Not necessarily that it was to share with everybody. But I wanted to go through the transcript of this video. Because this guy is talking about an interview he did with another guy. And so when I've showed you guys this video and talked about it in the past, right, from 2010, um, we know with events in real time on the earth right now that this is the time frame that was being discussed here in 2010. So I went to the transcripts. In fact, that's the uh, online version of it, which is uh, Project Avalon. But I have it here. Uh, see the from an, the interview recorded January 2010 and the video we saw was from June 2010 from when he did a talk about that interview. So I'm going to go into some of this transcript today <coughs> to show you what the enemy has planned, what they've been planning for a long time. You're, you'll see that they, they were never talking about it as if it was something they were planning to do, but that in this interview, when he's talking about it, they were planning, they, they were talking about the action as to where they were at in making these things happen. So we're going to go into a number of these different things. Like I said, we're going to talk a little bit more on this. Uh, the end is the beginning. And when we looked at this whole end is the beginning, this day right here, the ninth of Av equals 50 days to the 18th of September. It literally equals 50 days and was the revelation of, was it this one, of the word end only being used four times. I'm not going to go back into all of it. I would recommend everybody that has that's new, maybe just catching this video for the first time or ministry revealed, go watch this video. Go watch this video. But to understand that video, to understand how we got here in ministry revealed to this point, you're gonna want to come to this playlist. This playlist now has six videos in it. I'll click on it so you guys can see. It has one, two, three, four, five, six videos in it. Highly recommend. Oh, I won't say mandatory, you can do whatever you want, but if you want to understand the end times and how we can understand it's about to begin, even though people will say the tribulation is only seven years, you know, everybody thinks the rapture is coming, the rapture is coming, and there is something like a rapture that's coming, but it's not the amount everybody thinks. If the rapture were to happen now in the way they think in a seven-year tribulation, how is it that 2027 is 2,000 years to the Lord's return, feet down on the Mount of Olives. You see, it doesn't make sense. Christ never died in 27 AD. He would return after 2,000 years completed on the earth from his death and his resurrection. All right? So that's part of a, of a mystery, and it has to do with this second piece, which is understanding that the true end times is 14 years. It's two sets of seven years. Six years and the seventh year of rest for seals, Six years of trumpets and the seventh year the Lord returns. Feet down on the Mount of Olives to fulfill that final year himself. But you must re uh, you must watch this one first. They're just both half an hour. Very detailed and they even got study notes to print off for you with it as well. All right. So from that, this video too, after you see those, this one here is the Gangbusters video. 
You want to understand the book of Revelation from chapter 6 to chapter 13 like you never have in your life? You want to watch this one. But you can't understand it unless you watch those first two videos to understand who the Gospels are speaking to and the truth of the 14 years. Then you could understand what's being talked about in this last video and what we're talking about today of how this period of time has been getting revealed to this ministry since it started. For those that aren't aware, it's an end time ministry. This ministry has been getting revealed through scripture, end time understanding like it's never been revealed before. I don't know why, I can't explain it, except I could prove it. All right, we've proven it through all these videos over these years. So anybody that's new that's wondering, how is this possible <laughs> just by the Spirit of the Lord? All right, we're now, uh, like I said, we're now in a, in a time that's getting uh, very intense. You know, we understand where we're at. We understand what these numbers equal, this period that we're in. You know, here's something else I wanted to show you guys. Check this out. Oh, there's a couple things in this that's pretty wild. This is called the Three Weeks Law and Customs. It's a 21-day period of national mourning that the Jews should be doing right now. And what's it called? The Tishbav and the Three Weeks. What is this Three Weeks about? I'm going to show it to you here on their calendar. It's from the 17th of Tammuz. Okay? The 17th of Tammuz. They mourn, they fast and mourn for three weeks. One, two, three weeks. You see, that's why it's called Tish, Tishbav. That's what it was saying here. Tishbav, the three weeks fasting and mourning, or the, the, the custom that they have for a national time of mourning. Because what happened on the ninth of Av is the first temple and the second temple were both destroyed on the ninth of Av. And many other things in their history as well have happened on the 9th of Av. We've been proving and showing that this year, we've been trying to understand for the longest time throughout this year. I mean, we thought the Lord was counting from last year when Israel turned, we thought Israel turned 71. We realized that they didn't turn 71 last year, but that in March of last year, 2019, is when they actually turned 70. So they completed their 70th year this year on March 10th, 2020, because they didn't have a government yet. They had a provisional government in 1948, May 15th, 1948, until May 10th of 1949, they were under a provisional government. So the day one, when he stepped into office, the 10th into the 11th began the start of the count. It just so happened that on the 70th year, when the end of 70 was March 10th, 2020, and the 71st started on March 11th, 2020. What happened on March 11th, 2020 this year? The global pandemic was, de was declared and the whole world changed, all right? So we did expect something and something did happen. Was it what we expected? Nope, but it was major and it was something that affected the whole world anyways. And then we were following along and we got to learn the calendars better and we got to learn properly with the sun, moon and stars. And we, the Lord took us through so much more revelation since then. But we'd kept wondering, where is the Lord counting from? You know, the, the Jews, this calendar works on a solar, uh, on a lunar calendar. And we came to realize that the, there's this, the, the lunar count when the new moon for the beginning of the year for Nisan is in Virgo. But there's a solar count as well. And the solar count is in September when the sun leaves Leo and goes into Virgo. That's this year from the 18th into the 19th. And when, Le when the sun goes into Virgo, that's the beginning of the solar year, which is on the 19th of September. Okay, that's why the Jews have two beginnings of the year. Okay, two new years, but this is their key one. Look, they change from one year 5780 to 5781. This is why they do it. Well, I'm sure many of you have also heard over the years that there's also, now we know that Jesus is the bright and morning star is Venus, right? We know in the planets also that Jupiter 
is the type of the Father. Okay, we know that Mercury, the messenger, is the type of the Holy Spirit. So within that to to as well, we've got the sun and the moon. Now the sun is the less, uh, sorry, the moon is the lesser light and the sun is the greater light. So we've got the moon as Christ as the lesser light and we've got the sun as the greater light who is the father. And we've been trying to understand all this time, Lord, where are you counting from? Where does this count all start? And we've gone through a lot of different times here, uh, here in Ministry Revealed, because in this period, since about, uh, well, March, yeah, you know, March, really counting it into the end of May is when it really, we were kicking into high gear here in trying to understand this period of time of, of a day that it would begin. And I know many people, you'll say, oh, nobody knows the day or hour. That's why you have to watch those 30 minute videos. When you watch that 30 minute video, you're gonna understand that Luke is speaking to the bride of Christ. Mark is speaking to the left behind church, okay? The bride is 10% of the church. Mark is the 90% that's left to go through seals. And Matthew is to the Jews, is to Judah, okay? That's the time of trumpets. So they're gonna go through seals. They're gonna go through trumpets. The end of the Gentiles times ends at the end of seals. And then you've got the time of trumpets, which is Jacob's trouble time. All right. <clears throat> and there's a whole bunch that happens in between. So it's key to understand. So when we read in Mark or when we read in Matthew, like all you guys like to do, it's you read from Matthew and you go to everything end times from Matthew because you don't understand who Mark and Luke are speaking to with end time understanding. When you do, you'll realize Matthew says nobody knows the day or hour. Mark says nobody knows the day or hour. Both of them say it slightly differently about the story of it. But in Luke, you don't see nobody knows that day or hour. In fact, Luke has no conversation about that whatsoever. Luke says, be ready and watching, right? Watch and pray always so that day doesn't come upon you unawares. Because it'll come unawares unto the whole earth. Well, that means those who are watching and praying and seeking the Lord, they're not going to be caught off guard because they're going to see that day coming. You see, it's not going to be some mystery. Nobody knows the day or hour of which, by the way, nobody knows the day or hour isn't a big mystery. It's only a two day period at trumpets anyways. Okay. So anyways, having said that, we're going to, we're going to go into to a bunch of this. And yes, we, we've been looking at specific days. But here in this ministry, we've been talking about and showing these revelations for a long time. We did, I did a video back uh, five, a little over five months ago now called the expiration date. There is an expiry date. All right. I've been talking about this for almost two and a half years. I know that the book of Zechariah speaks to us in the type and shadow of 14 years. It says these 70 years in chapter one, which according to the sun, according to the greater light, which will begin the tribulation, okay? The 14 years of tribulation, seven years of seals and seven years of trumpets, different periods for different people and so forth, all right? It doesn't mean the church and everybody that misses is gonna stay here for 14 years. That's not what it is. You need to watch those videos, okay? But the quote unquote rapture that's everybody's looking for, that comes after the sixth year. That's during the seventh year of rest, all right, of seals. So that won't be for another seven, well, six and a half or so approximately years from now. You don't want to wait for that. And I don't expect anybody watching is waiting to go in the rapture. They want to go in the escape of the Gentile bride. The like a rapture that uh, 2 Corinthians 12, 2 talks about, all right? The first one goes to the third heaven. The second group goes to paradise. That second group is the rapture. Okay, we're talking Luke about going to paradise. And in Zechariah, there's a reason why it says these 70 years, okay? And then we see he was very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease, and then the affliction comes. How is it that it's these 70 years if Israel has already turned 71? What are we missing? 
if Israel has already turned 71 and it says these 70 years, and this looks like it's still a period of time maybe connected to those 70 years because it says these 70 years, what do we know comes first? We know that there's two attacks, right? We know the reason why seven years later in chapter seven, it says those 70 years, meaning for 70 years you observe these feasts of the fasting and mourning in the fifth and seventh month, right? In there, they're now 71, but in God's count now, okay, they did these things. But guess what? This seventh month one, when this seventh month, that second, uh, sorry, the fifth and seventh month, when this seventh month attack comes, guess what? It'll be the end of those 70 years. Do you see that? Because we're talking on God's calendar, on God's count, which is from the sun. We talked about this in the last video, right? When the sun leaves Leo and goes into Virgo is the start of the cycle of the sun. And this is why the Lord God is saying it in Zechariah. So what's going to happen? We know this first attack in the fifth month is right here. We know the second attack in the seventh month is in this time frame, in the seventh month. And then what does it say? Those 70 years. You see, because what's happened? The 14 years have now begun. We've now reached the year 71. So if we go to Psalms 90 and 10, well, first of all, and you see what it says, it says when Jerusalem was inhabited, was in prosperity, when they inhabited the south of the plain, meaning Jerusalem and south, Judah. This is a period of a second attack taking place. Why? Because the second attack is the one of the seventh month, which is why it's mentioned here. The one in the fifth month is mentioned because after that attack happens, Judah and Jerusalem haven't been destroyed yet. The northern part, Israel, right, Samaria, Israel, probably through Tel Aviv, the, the west coast and so forth. That's the destruction and that's why we're, we're feeling uh, very tense right now. This is where we are right now as I'm making this video. We're looking at a period of time that tells us within this period right here, there's going to be tactical nukes used. There's, there's been this agging on of Iran, as you're going to see, to get them to use a tactical nuke in Israel so that now the West can bring an attack against them without looking like they're the bad guys. All right? But we know scripturally this is planned. We can prove it with events on the world of these things going on, which is one of the reasons I'm going to show you some of that transcript as we get further along as well. This is attack number one time. This is an attack that's probably going to see hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions die. And it was foretold to us in scripture. But this first attack isn't by Ishmael. Okay, this first attack isn't by the raven. This first attack isn't by the lion that we see in Daniel 7. This is the attack that's like a, 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 like a spanking, if you will, to Israel. Okay, to the Jewish people, to Israel. This is the spank that they're going to get to wake up and repent. Okay, that's going to start a 50-day period that's going to bring us to the end of the year. Literally was the reason for this word end only being used four times. And why in that last video I showed that all four of these places where it's being used literally relate to the end of the year right here which literally relate to the end of the 50 days and literally equal Ishmael, the lion, the raven, and the time when the next attack will come, which will be done by the what? The third of Tishri, when whoever is put in place after Netanyahu, because it's highly likely, highly probable, according to scripture, that Netanyahu is going to perish in this attack. All right? This is according to scripture. I'm not a prophet. I'm a teacher. I have revelation of end time understanding. And these things have been proving out to be true. We're about to find out in a very sad way, yet exciting way, 
that if we have understood that it does actually, in fact, equal the Hebrew calendar, which it does appear to be, that this is that period of time. And with Netanyahu, who is like a Metanyahu, who is Zedekiah, that we'll see in a little bit, Zedekiah had his name changed from Netanyahu, from Metanyahu with an M. It's a fascinating story you guys can go in and see the details of just doing a search on Zedekiah name change from Metanyahu. Yes, Metanyahu, <laughs> okay? It's crazy, I know, but it's true. And uh, he's the one that dies, his family, whether it's in the attack or being captured and then killed, okay? But what kicks off the 14 years, the tribulation time, is when the lion attacks. The lion will attack, just like we see when the 40 days is over in the story of the ark, all right, before the seven and seven begin, the raven is released, okay? I'm gonna get into that a bit with you guys today to show you that I believe we're looking at the three days, seven days, 40 days scenario, okay? That we have this connection to Deuteronomy that we've talked about before, 19. You see, why, why do we have this connection? Sorry, not Deuteronomy, but Exodus. We have this story being given to us starting in Exodus 19 with Moses on the mountain at the, at the third month. But we have this type and shadow that we're looking at, not that it's connected to the third month, but we're looking at the type and shadow of events taking place, okay? Where Moses is at the top of the mountain, kind of like Christ, right? Christ is up there in heaven on the top of Mount, on the top of, Mount uh, of Paradise. And the Lord tells him, the Father tells him, hey, go down and tell them today, tomorrow, and on the third day, okay? Some people, I've been getting phone calls. I was on a call uh, yesterday with a brother and sister, uh, with Holly and Rick, and they were sharing some things with uh, with dreams that they just had. And I mean, man, this is happening a lot, guys. We had another sister that shared in the forum. Uh, her two two of her sons had dreams just last night. I mean, it's kicking into overdrive now. And so we have this three day type in shadow. Think of it like the Passover. Is this relating to Passover? No. It's talking about the third month. But is there a type and shadow going on? Yes, you got three days. On the third day, have them be ready, be cleansed, right? We have seven days after that when the Lord's going to come and there's a group that goes up and, the, and they're going to be having a feast with the Lord. It's incredible. And after those se the seven-day feast with the Lord, what's going to happen? Then there's the period where Moses goes up for 40 days and 40 nights. We have a story here of a three and a seven that equals 10. And then we've got a 40 days and 40 nights. And the reason I relate this and say, hey, think of it like a like Passover is because the time at the beginning of the year with, with uh, the moon, right, with Christ, is we had on the third day he rose from the dead. Then... If we looked at this on the calendar, we've talked about this one before. Earlier this year, as we started understanding these calendars better. Okay, we've got Passover. On the third day, it was his resurrection. But we have a mystery. And this mystery is what throws so many of this, so much of this understanding off on how the count works. You see, here would have been the third day of his resurrection. And what happens? It's still Passover. I'm sorry, yeah, it's still Passover. It's still the, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So there can't be a Feast of First Fruits in a Feast of Unleavened Bread at the same time doing a feast. You have another feast in the middle of that feast week. It doesn't make sense. So we realize if we stick following the Hebrew calendar here, we realize that from the next regular Passover, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Sabbath after would be the 19th. And when we figured this 19th and we read about the temple scrolls and we do the seven Sabbaths from there, guess what? There's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, there's five, there's six, there's seven. Look at where it lands. So if we follow um, uh, Feast of Weeks, Shavuot, 
it would equal the day after the seventh Sabbath is Shavuot. And the temple scrolls told us the 15th day of the third month was the true uh, Shavuot. You see? But from here, we have a count of 50 days. And in this count of 50 days, we have one new moon and two new moons. Watch what happens. So if we take from the sixth month, eighth day, okay, and we add 50 days that we're to count, but we know that in two new moons, the new moon day isn't a day that's counted, right? If we add 52 days, where do we end up? July 30th. So we could be looking at this July 30th, this, that, you can even say if you want that 28th to the 30th, but I'm saying that 30th time frame, 29th, 30th, we're looking at the true feast of new wine. The true, I, or I should say the true Pentecost, right? Feast of new wine. So is this potentially the day of the escape of the bride? That when the attack happens, boom, the bride is taken? It's possible because when we look at these stories and we see in history, wait till you see what I'm going to show you. And we see in history that Enoch, on the day he was born, he was taken. On the day of of uh, of the birth of Sam, uh, of uh, sorry, of uh, Elisha, he was born. He was he he died, right, or was taken. Many in those two, they didn't die. They were taken on the day of their birth, right? Which is why Enoch was 365, 365 days in a year. He was taken on the day he was born, okay? Same type in shadow playing out. And so if they were taken, if this is the time that it equaled, that they were taken at Pentecost, at true Pentecost, that it was seven times seven, right? Seven weeks. And then it's a 50-day count. Well, look at where we end up. This is the day we've been talking about. The day that equals uh, uh, the, the beginning of the end, this, this count that would then start. This, uh, we have an expiry date that we've been talking about. You see, we thought maybe this was to be the end of the 50-day count. You see, we were looking at this count from 50 saying, well, if this is the 15th of Savan, then we've got to be gone before here. This is that 50-day count. It's got to be it. But what we fail to understand is that because Zechariah talks to us about two attacks, and we know that there are two attacks, even in going into Scripture, talking about one in the fifth and one in the seventh, it's because when the first one happens at the fifth month, which is the end of this month, that 29th, 30th time frame, they wouldn't flee out of the land totally yet. That the second attack is the one at the end of 50 days. So we come back to this and we say, oh, now we're starting to follow this. There's another 50 that starts from here. And it just turns out that that 50 from here that goes to this 50 is lined up with that period now of what they would say, not new wine, but of new oil, okay? That special anointing that would come upon those by the Holy Ghost as what we call Acts 2.0. And what we were looking to happen here goes to the second final 50, which is down here. It's amazing stuff. Amazing, amazing stuff. It's like I said in the last one, and I'm gonna show you here, you know, this morning in the, in the, in the fourth month, Right? What is this? What is this three weeks prior where they start mourning? Well, they start right here. See, in July, July 9th, which is the 17th of Tammuz, like I told you earlier. One, two, three days, three weeks to the end of that morning. And that morning brings them to the 9th of Av Tubiah, Tishbav. Okay? Well, I'm going to show you something that's really wild here. Now, I'm not saying this is. I believe we've proven with the sun, moon, and stars, we know when Christ was born, okay? We know the 10th and the 11th of September was his conception date, okay? That's when the Holy Ghost dropped him into, dropped the, the seed off, came over the Virgin, over Mary. 
we can see it in virgo we saw the back and forth of jupiter crossing regulus the king star planet with with the king planet and then nine months later exactly 280 days later venus joins with jupiter okay the sun the bright and morning star joining with jupiter the king planet right the father right there in leo the lion right in the middle of it okay we know that that's what the the wise men had seen and what they had followed this whole thing we know that but i'm going to show you something that the jews believe that's been taught down through their generations okay it talks about what goes on during this three weeks of mourning which the jews are in right now okay even while they're moving some of the military there to the northern border with uh with lebanon because they know because israel killed somebody really top in uh in hamas so they know an attack's coming so they're blocking specific borders there's already tension and stuff building right now okay now we can say oh we've seen that type of thing before it happens all the time yeah i get it i know it happens all the time except it's different because we know this time we know this season and time of all the seasons and times that we're in you know how we showed that how we showed that if you take 2020 and you know that messiah is now coming at the end of 13 years at the end of the sixth trumpet and you had seven years of seals and you had six years of trumpets that's 13 years when he comes at the end and he's going to fulfill that seventh trumpet while here then that means when he comes feet down at the at on the mount of olives at the end of the sixth trumpet if that's 13 years we'll add 13 years to 2020 and you end up in 2033. When did Christ die? Some will say, oh, it was 20, it was 30 AD, 31, 32. Well, it's believed by most it was 33. We can prove it was 33 now. 13 years from this year that we're in right now is the return of Messiah, feet down on the Mount of Olives. And why was I saying this is interesting? Where was I getting at with this in relation to this three weeks to the ninth of Av? Check this out. I'd never heard this before until reading this. Watch this. From destruction to renewal. Watch this. The ninth of Av, say our sages, is not only the day of the temple's destruction, it is also the birthday of Moshiach. What? What? (laughs) For those that have been watching for a while, what it is also the birthday of moshiach what you see we've got videos that we've done on these different things right where is this one his birth shall bring being right on target uh what else do we have look at this video this video is four to five months old look at what it's called after the 50th the tribulation begins this year what this was before all of these things were before the revelation that we just got of the word end that is the end of the solar cycle that began this period of time this period that we're talking in that equals 50 days and tribulation begins see his birth shall bring Well, we based it on the sun, moon, and stars and and looking at where it equaled, which was the 15th of Savan, right? The 15th day of the third month. But when we did it, we saw that it actually equaled the time of, um, uh, on the the solar, on the way the calendar should work, we saw that it actually equaled uh, July 5th. So we've been expecting some things based on his birthday. And now all of a sudden, we got this strange thing that I'd never heard of before that the sages that the passed down through tradition, through oral tradition and so forth in, in Judaism, that the birth of Messiah is the ninth of Av. And we've been talking about his birth shall bring. Is, is there another connection with this to, to his birth and his death and, and when he would return? It's pretty interesting, I'll tell you that much. Really interesting, because 
when we come back to this video, this video was the one that you guys know about that I had had this, I, I was a little bit distraught after doing this video because this video was the revelation that the number 14 in Hebrew, of uh, uh, the 14th letter in Hebrew equals 50. So 14 equals 50 or 50 equals 14. And biblically what we were talking about is that there's a 50 day count and then the 14 years begins. And then when the 14 years are over, it's actually the 50th Jubilee year. So we got 50, 14, 50. And when I had said to the Lord, when I showered that night and I was, I was really saying, whoa, Lord, this, you know, ugh, I got to take this video down. You know, when I did this video, one of the reasons I wanted to take it down was because I thought it meant this being, you see, the way they counted it here was wrong to Shavuot. We thought it was May 31st, the way it first equaled. And so I thought by June 1st was the beginning of tribulation because of this revelation that 14 equals 50, right? 50 equals 14, 14 equals 50. And I did the video and that 50 being over would then be June 1st and the 14 years of tribulation would begin. When I did this, I said, Lord, please, please. I, I don't ask for confirmations. I please. I want one for this or I'm taking this video down tomorrow morning. I need this confirmation tonight or by tomorrow morning when I wake up or I'm going to take this video down. And I wanted a confirmation of a number 50 that would catch my attention and that I would understand in that whatever you were telling me that you would let me know that I was understanding, that I was on track with what I was understanding from that teaching. And as you guys know, I received this email at 12.40. I didn't see it till about 1.15 in the morning. Well, it turned out at 11.30, uh, about an hour or so, you know, 11.30 to 11.45. It was about an hour before I got this email was when I was saying that prayer to the Lord. And she says, very important. She ended up being overcome by the Holy Spirit in a way she had never been before. And I knew when I saw this title and I read the first thing, she says it's not, you know, because I hear people say the Holy Spirit told me this or told me that. And sometimes, you know, you got to take these things with a grain of salt. But when I read this, I knew that I knew she had received it from the Holy Spirit. And she says that it happened to her at the 50 minute mark of the video she was watching. Well, what video was she watching? The video I had put out just hours before earlier in that day. She was overcome at the 50 minute mark of the video. And at the 50 minute mark of the video, there was really nothing special going on. But I had said, catch my attention with the number 50. And it caught my attention immediately because I realized the number 50 and there was no connection. It's not like she said 50th Jubilee or anything like that. But 50 minute mark in the video, the Holy Spirit, boom, grabbed her. And she knew immediately that she was to let me know, and she put it in brackets, that I was right on target. That was the greatest, that was the biggest. Now, I, I, I listen, I know the understanding of the end time scriptures that have been revealed to me. I know it is the leading of the Holy Spirit as I take the action to seek it out. This was something else. That, that receiving of that from her by the Holy Spirit, I knew that I knew that I knew that I knew that I had been understanding all of this. I knew that I was on track. I knew I was right on target. Unfortunately, I thought that right on target meant at that time. What was the Spirit telling me? That I was right on target. I hadn't hit the target, but I was right on target. And what was this target about? The 50 days. When this 50 days ends, tribulation begins, and it would be this year. See, after the 50, tribulation begins this year. And what am I talking to you guys about right now? We've discovered the 50. And what's the 50 related to? I thought it was this other count in an improper count, which is what the Lord has been taking us through the past several months and understanding how to count these things out. But where does it turn out this count begins? 
on the day I've been talking about for almost two and a half years. The ninth of Av, the day Zechariah chapter 7 told us would be the first attack. For a long time, I had assumed that that first attack was the only attack, which is why I put it at the end of 50 days. Now we know it's the first attack, and it's the one that begins the count of the 50 days. And when this 50 day count ends, it's the time of the second attack. But that second attack begins at the start of the 14 years. Do you get it? This is why the lion, Ishmael, the raven is all talked about at the start. This is the start with the red horse rider. The white horse rider was the son of man for 40 days, giving warning. And they're going to see them being surrounded. And they're going to be told to flee and to get out of the land because Ishmael is surrounding them. This is what's going to happen during the time of the son of man. This is why Luke 21 says, and when you see Jerusalem compassed about, this is that compassing about. In fact, let me show you that word. See the word for end? And it's the story even of Syria, the lion, Ishmael coming and surrounding them and destroying them. Look at the word. Coming around. Circuit of time and space because it's the end of the sun cycle. Okay? It means to circuit, to, uh, to circle, to surround. This is the end of those 50 days. So for those who've been watching for a little while, you might want to feel like this right now. <laughs> Perfect picture for what I was saying. Not planned. Here we were talking about an expiration date for over two years. Built into a period of time that we, start with, that we thought was the end of 50. Turns out it's the start of 50. And that the end of the 50 is the second attack. And it's the revelation of what the Lord gave me as right on target by the power of the Holy Spirit through our sister Jodell. You see? Being right on target. Look at, there it is, right on target, connected to something with his birth. After 50, the 14 years begins. The count starts at the expiration date. The truth is that it's 14 years. And the Gospels reveal who the time frames are speaking to. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Jerusalem's coming first and second attacks. Jerusalem's coming first and second destructions revealed. Unfortunately, this is where it gets really painful. Because we know what this means then. To be proven right means death. Means death. This will begin in the Middle East. It will not be when World War III breaks out yet. This begins in the Middle East. I believe, here's, here's my play on this for you guys. This attack on Israel and in the Middle East... Uh, it'll be short-lived. In this short attack, in this short nuclear, uh, 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 um, limited nuclear, right, tactical nuclear exchange, probably hundreds of thousands into maybe even millions dying, it'll be short. When it's over, when the, it'll be a, a declaration to settle things down into what we all know, this peace and security. Once this peace and security is revealed, it'll bring destruction upon the nations who brought it, in particular, America, who has been trying to get this peace deal done. At that destruction that hits America of when they say peace and safety, it's Israel, after America has all these incredible destructions, part of the Western world, in particular, this side of the Western world, 
will receive all these devastations, but America won't be able to come and help for what's coming to Israel next. Israel is going to say, uh, they're going to ask Israel for help, but Israel can't help. How is Israel to help when they're going to start being surrounded by these other nations now, in particular, Syria leading the charge and them coming from the north? They won't be able to help because they know they're being surrounded. And I would say right now, everybody should be fleeing in Israel that hears my voice or that knows people and telling them to flee. But we know after that first attack, many in particular in the southern portion of Israel with Jerusalem and south into Judah, they're going to still be there because the second attack still has to come, which is why it says the fifth and the seventh, because they're still in the land. And then when this 50 days is over and the Son of Man has left, the 14 years begins, and it begins with the second attack on Israel. And it will be against Judah and Jerusalem. And they'll be devastated. And whoever was this second leader put in charge, you know, it was very interesting. Uh, Jamie, one of our sisters, she had said, uh, you know, we thought maybe we're looking at Benny Gantz. Well, maybe instead of Benny Gantz, what if it's not Benny Gantz, but it's um, uh, the former prime minister before Benjamin Netanyahu, it was um, Ehud Olmert. You know, what if it's Ehud Olmert because they need somebody tactical with experience, so they want Ehud Olmert to go in, and Ehud Olmert might be that type of Gedalia, right? Ehud Olmert might be the guy who brought in the peace deal who ends up getting killed by the 21st of September. This day right here is their fasting and mourning in the seventh month. You see? When is it? At the beginning of the year it starts, the attack. And Gedalia is killed. Who is this type and shadow of Gedalia? Is it, is it uh, Benny Gantz who takes over? Or is it uh, is it Ehud Omer? You know, we've talked about this in the past. This is a great image that we've talked about. This whole thing with Ehud Omer. Oops. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> Here, give me a second. So, we've talked about this in relation to Ehud Omer before. Those audibles that were given to, uh, to Prophecy Club's wife, Stan over at Prophecy Club. In this one, she had six words given. When she heard Omer ushers in Palestinian state, she didn't know if it was Omer or Omert, okay? A former leader of Israel before Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was Ehud Omert. And we did this, we did a video on Ehud Omert, didn't we? The video we did on Ehud Omert, you'll see it's the one that has this picture right here. So this is former Prime Minister Ehud Omer, and this is the leader of the Palestinians. And we're talking about a peace deal coming, and this former Israeli leader was the closest to getting a deal done with the Palestinians, and his name meaning Ehud Omer, and she was confused as to whether she heard Omer or Omert. I do believe she heard Omert, and we prove this out as possible with his name from Numbers chapter 3. His name is also Ehud. Was it Numbers? Yeah. Where is it? Is it Numbers 4? Where'd it go? Uh, oh, sorry, Judges. In Judges chapter 3, we find his name everywhere. Ehud, all right? His name is Ehud Omer. We find Ehud, 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 Ehud. I think it's nine times in all eight or nine times are in this chapter. His name means united. So Ehud Omer, she didn't know if she heard Ehud, uh, if she heard Omer or Omert. And his first name is Ehud. And Ehud is in scripture and his name means unity. And it comes from the Hebrew word 258 which is to unify, and it's only used one time. And where is it used? This was so awesome, guys. You remember this video, right? It was so awesome. The one time this word for 
the root word of Ehud, which is used one time, is the Hebrew word 258, and it's used in Ezekiel chapter 21. Here it is right here. It's a strange saying. Go the one way or the other. That's it right here. This is the root word of Ehud's name. It's used once, and it means go one way or the other. It seems very strange, except for when you listen to what the chapter talks about. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man. Who's here for 40 days, guys? The Son of man. Who is Ezekiel? He is a type and shadow of the Son of man. And the Lord tells the Son of man, Set your face to Jerusalem, and drop thy word toward and prophesy against the land of Israel. And it's all about the Lord God brandishing his sword. I'm not going to go into it all. You guys know it. The Lord is ready. His sword is furbished. It's ready to make a sore slaughter. You see, he's going to give it to the hand of the slayer. Whoa. This is the Lord God giving the great sword to the red horse rider, to the slayer. And who is this time connected to? Ehud. At the time of unifying what is that period being spoken about when that unifying comes when this unifying comes it's going to happen during the time of what of who the son of man being here it's going to happen during the period of 40 days while the son of man is here and he's warning them i am about to give the sword to the slayer and when he gives the sword to the slayer, what period of time is it? The red horse rider time. When peace is going to be taken from the earth and that they should kill one another and a great sword is given. This is when the 14 years begins. The white horse rider is the son of man here for 40 days. This is what's happening. Okay? Now, is it all connected? Yes, because that 50-day count, it's not directly part of the tribulation of the end of days. It's the warning call. It's the blast to wake everything up. I don't know, like I said before, does the bride leave on that day? Right? Does the bride of Christ leave on this day? I'm not sure. But remember what I was showing you earlier? We have this type and shadow. You know how they, in fact, I don't know if it was in here. But if you go read on this, about this whole thing with the connection to the ninth of Av and the period of time that it brings, you can do other research and find other connections to it. But it talks about the ninth of Av and this period of time as a continuation meaning as a type of Passover. Remember what I was talking to you about? We have Passover resurrected on the third day, but what happened on the third day? Let's, let's go to this in Luke, okay? Let's go to Luke chapter 24. And there's a reason I wanna bring this up. I told you guys earlier, and many of you know this who aren't new, that who Luke, Mark, and Matthew are speaking to. So if you go into the last chapter of Luke and the last chapter of Mark and the last chapter of Matthew, the Synoptic Gospels, and you read the story, it's a different story. It's not all the same. And we've broken this down many times to explain it. Now in this one here in Luke, I've thought many times, whoa, look at what we've got here. They go to the, sep the sepulcher very early in the morning. When? On the third day. Okay, I'm making a point. On the third day. And when they go in, what does it say? And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. Okay, what does that mean? They found not the body of Christ. Well, isn't a good type and shadow of the body of Christ is like when, like me and my wife, right? You get married and the two become one. We are one body, right? So wouldn't the bride of Christ coming together with the Christ, right, be as one when we get married? So here, the body of Christ, the bride isn't found. 
That's the type and shadow. And then it says, and it came to pass they were much perplexed. Why would they be perplexed? This word perplexed is used, we've showed this before, in 2nd Esdras, right? The whole story in 2nd Esdras, I think, 13, starting here in verse 29. And what do we see? Behold, the days are coming when the Most High will deliver those who are on the earth. This is the escape of the bride. And then what does it say? And bewilderment of mind shall come upon all those who dwell on the earth. And then what do we see? And they shall plan to make war against one another, city against city, people against people, kingdom against kingdom. Okay? The tribulation, the red horse rider would then start after they've planned and made this war then begins. Okay? So you have escape, this time of the third day that's connected to bewilderment, and then the plan to make war against each other, which we know will be after the, the 50 days. So we have this interesting connection going on here. Third day, and then if Christ is gone, okay, if the bride is gone at the third day, remember what I showed you guys earlier with the story in Exodus, right? Moses, God told Moses, today, tomorrow, and on the third day, let them be ready. Okay, they had to be cleansed during those three days. Well, if the attack on the 30th is day one, okay, if we're looking at this and the attack being day one, ninth of Av being day one, day two, day three, okay? So something to happen sometime here as what? Well, if we're following the story, of the type and shadow going on here at the third day they went to look inside boom the bride was gone i don't think it means the bride would go on the first day as the type and shadow and they realize that the third day i believe what's happening is the bride escapes on the third day okay after that period of cleansing okay is it possible we go on the first day and then there's this cleansing that takes place in the heavens somehow I mentioned that because I heard somebody talk about it recently that they saw Mary being there as, as the one cleansing them. Is it possible? Sure. But if we follow the type and shadow, I believe they were to be ready by the third day. The third day this time would be Saturday. Okay, we're following the same type and shadow. And don't forget what I said. If you go do research on the, the story of the ninth of Av, they relate it as a type and shadow continuation of Passover. And here we are in Luke 24. We've talked about Luke 24, Matthew uh, six, uh, Mark 16, and Matthew 28 many, many, many times. It relates to the time of Christ, the 40 days. It relates to when Christ returns at, at the end of seals. And in Matthew, it relates to when he returns feet down on the Mount of Olives. Okay, there are three events, pre, mid, and post. Before tribulation of seals begins, after the seals, and then at the end of trumpets. So if we're following this story as the type and shadow from Matthew, Mark, sorry, Luke 24, here's the third day. Third day is the resurrection of Christ. But what we've always done is we've always said, well, that's the first fruits, like I said earlier. If this was really the first fruits, then you got a feast within a feast being celebrated. Doesn't make any sense. So when you go to the moral after the sabbath of this feast of of uh, unleavened bread you end up on the 19th and i showed you that count earlier so what are we looking at three days okay to the resurrection of the bride then you have a seven day event taking place something related because you got to wait till the sabbath after so you got seven days and then what would happen the son of man here for 40 days you see, why do I bring this up? Because we have something very interesting going on with Luke. First of all, only in Luke's uh, um, resurrection story do we have the body of Jesus not there, okay? Only in Luke do we have where it says where they were perplexed. And guess what? Jesus shows up to them still at that third day, right? He's walking down the street and they say, what? You don't realize what happened? And it's the third day. So what can happen? The bride escapes at the third day, but the Son of Man is still here. Maybe the Son of Man is going to be here for a day. 
what would he be doing on that day? I believe he may be preparing the disciples or the apostles that he's chosen, that he's going to choose at that time. I believe he's going to prepare them. I'm going to show you that when we get into Luke chapter 12. Okay. So because we also see him here for this third day. Now we say, yeah, but he started the third day and he was here for 40. Are you sure about that? You've all been taught from Matthew. Luke doesn't say the same words. Okay. Look what happens. He's here for the third day and he's walking with them. They don't realize who he is. All right. This is the story we get here. And then what happens? They say, no, it's getting late in the day. You come and stay with us. You come and eat with us, right? See, they're still saying, and this is the third day since these things were done. So the story's taking place about three days still. It's still the third day. And he's talking with them. And didn't he say he was to suffer these things? And so it's still the third day. It's still the third day. And then what happens? In 24 verse 30, it says, And it came to pass as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to them and their eyes were opened and they knew him and what? He vanished. He vanished. Look, this word vanished. Hello. You guys know this. How many times have I told you about this? When you see a word happen just a few times or one or two times, pay attention. Try to discern it. He vanished only in Luke. So in Luke's explanation of all this, he vanished. Now guess what? They talk about how he spoke with them and he opened to them the scriptures. That they could understand the scriptures. And then they rose up and they were going to Jerusalem. And then at some point, we don't know how long later, what happens? And as they thus spoke, Jesus stood in the midst of them and said, Peace be unto you. And they were terrified. We don't know how long this is from when he vanished to when he shows up in the midst of them. So there's a reason <clears throat> why in Luke only, he vanishes. When we go to the story of the resurrection in Luke in uh, John chapter 20, we also have the story there where he tells them, don't touch me. I haven't yet ascended to my father. So there's a period of time from his ascension where he's walking with these guys for that day and then vanishes, which I believe is connected to the one being spoken about in John where he still had to go to the father. Well, guess what? Who went there at this morning, very early in the morning of that third day? In our type and shadow for the end, the bride did. His body. So his body did, and he's here with this group, and he's walking with them. There's people perplexed on the earth. There's panic setting in. And the Lord appears to show up to a very small group of people. And then vanishes from their sight for a period of time. This is what I believe is happening. The same type and shadow. Three days to the resurrection, seven days to the true first fruits before he fulfills 40 days. What's this a story of? Three days like Moses. Seven days where the feast takes place that the Lord prepared for, the, for a group of them on the mountain. And then Moses had his 40 days and 40 nights. And why is this, why does this have some importance? Because when we see this story in Exodus, the story begins in what? Chapter 19. The story begins in chapter 19 and it ends in chapter 34 with the covenant, with this whole thing about gathering of the first fruits of the wheat harvest, the end. What did it start? Chapter 19? What have we been telling you? What's this connection to chapter 19? It's the same connection we said 
from Psalms 19, which is the end, the sun circuit, the one of those places where the end is. And we've been showing in the chart of the timeline with the chapters to years that Psalms 19 is the beginning. When the 50 days is over, it's the end of the cycle. And here we are now looking at Exodus and the story that has a three day, seven day, 40 days connected to it that starts in chapter 19 and ends in chapter 34, which is the 14 years and the 50th of the Jubilee when the Lord makes the covenant, renews the covenant and every tribe gets their land again. And the millennial, then the millennial reign. It's the same story. See, it ends with the 15th year. 34, see? 20, 19, 20, see? 19 to 34. Why do we say 19? Because in God's count, in the Lord God's eyes, his timing doesn't end or start until the cycle of the sun. Hence, at the end of 50, 14 years begins. Just like the video from a few months ago. So, looking at what we're looking at, this type and shadow now, and we're looking at this type and shadow from Luke 24, and we're seeing this one, two, three days, bride could be taken, the Lord spends this day here with a group of people to wake them up, and then he vanishes. When he vanishes, there's a period of time we could say we don't really understand what this period of time is for how long he vanishes for, why that was explained or why that was given to us in Luke chapter 24. Well, if we follow the same pattern of the story of Moses and the mountain, if we follow the true pattern of three days to the resurrection and then seven days to the true feast of first fruits then the 40 days well guess what we have here one two three days the bride is taken the son of man is here just for a little bit with a certain group of people then he vanishes and look at what we have seven days before the 40 days begins. What do you think August 9th plus 40 days equals? The 18th of September, the last day. Why? Obviously, it's not a mystery. We're, we're taking 10 days. Three and seven. Why does this seven matter? Why does this seven matter? Well, we talked about this before <clears throat> in a number of places, but we see in... Again, these things that we've talked about before that we kind of thought were falling away by the wayside are back in the picture again. You see, for yet seven days, I believe this yet seven days is the type and shadow of the seven years, all right? Those seven easy years that, that Jacob worked for Leah, even though he was working for Rachel, he expected to be work, working for Rachel, but he got Leah. <clears throat> You see, in this type and channel, these are the first seven years. These seven years that we thought were the, that, that Jacob called the easy years. They flew by like what? I'm going to show you this. Watch this. Jacob says that these day, these years, these seven years that he's going to work for her, they seemed unto him but a few days. So we have a type and shadow of, Seven years that needed to pass that felt like days. So when the seven years are over, we have a type and shadow going on of seven days. Why would we have a seven day count before, check it out, before we have the 40 days and when they come to an end? So we have seven years that pass. We have a seven-day count. And when the seven-day count is over, the 40 days start. And when the 40 days are over, remember I was saying the raven? Raven is Ishmael. Ishmael is the lion. 
it's Assad, it's Syria. And the attack from Syria is the one at the start of the 14 years, just like Ishmael was born when Abraham was 86. And the promise Isaac, Jesus, was born when he turned 100. You see, at the start of 14 years, there's the raven, Arab. The root word of raven is Arab. And then what comes? Seven days of seven years, seals. And then seven days of seven years as a type and shadow of trumpets. So what do we have? Seven days, then 40. And when the seven and then the 40 are over, bang, the 14 years have begun. And it starts with the raven and the dove going out. The dove is the Holy Ghost empowering that group. And the raven is the one bringing an attack against Israel, the second attack, which is in the beginning of the seventh month, which is the beginning of the 14 years. But now going back to this one, this is what I want to show you how clear it is here. <clears throat> when we see that he worked seven years and they seemed unto him but a few days, soon as those days were fulfilled, he wants his bride right away. And what happens? Soon as that, for, soon as those seven years are done and he's going to get her, what does the father do? Okay. The father, Laban, the type and shadow of, of the father, he made a feast. What happens in the story of, uh, of Moses and the mountain? After those three days of cleansing, then a group goes up the mountain and the Lord had prepared a feast for them. How long was that feast? Seven days. How long is this feast? Well, when Laban finds out that he's been beguiled, he actually ended up getting Leah, not Rachel. He's like, oh, this sucks. What did you do to me? Laban tells him, hey, fulfill her week. What's this week? It's the week of the celebration, the feast week of the wedding. Okay? This is the Gentile wedding. Many people have asked me and said, well, what about the, the whole story of the 13 and 14 years with the wedding story? Right? What about that wedding story that's being talked about in, uh, in that I've talked about in relation to its 13 years for the betrothal, right? The agreement. Then she can be married, and then it's the wedding in the 14th year. And when we see her coming down from heaven, it's the, you know, it's the lamb's wife, right? The bride. Guys, there's a whole deep revelation going on there, all right? That this could be the Gentile bride wedding that comes first, and this other wedding are those who are the workers, right? Those who work seals, those who work trumpets. Remember, Christ as 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 Jacob. Jacob didn't work. He didn't come, He didn't want Leah. He wanted Rachel. When Christ came, he didn't come for the Gentiles. He came for Israel, right? He came for the lost tribes. He came for Rachel, but he ended up getting Gentiles, right? So they got mixed in. So he gets the Gentiles and then those ones, the ones that he really wanted were the ones working as well. And that's why at the end, when we see her coming down and how she's all beautiful, She's decorated with what? The ones who laid the foundation, right? The apostles. They're, she's decorated with uh, the ones who built the walls, the 144,000. And she's decorated with those who are going to work the millennial reign, right? Those who work the millennial reign who are going to be the gates. You see, this here going on with Leah, even though he was expecting Rachel, what's going on with Leah is that Gentile bride that comes first. Okay, is that Gentile bride that comes first. And we have here, fulfill her week. So again, we have another story going on with fulfill her week. So we got one, two, three days. Bride is gone. If we follow this type and shadow in Luke chapter 24 again, Jesus is here for a little bit, the son of man, and then boom, he vanishes. He's going to vanish for that same type and shadow of a week to the true first fruits. Even like I said, the Jews have an association from Passover to the, the to Tishbiav, okay, to the ninth of Av. And what do you think happens in this week? What do you think happens in this week? Well, according to everything we just showed, there's a wedding week. There's a one week of something taking place connected in, that's connected to the escape. It's there in Luke. It's there in two places uh, 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 for the story of the ark and for, for uh, Jacob. 
I'm going to show you that connection. We've talked about it before in Luke chapter 12. Well, it just so happens that in the 50 days that begin here, one, two, three, vanish and es escape and vanish. Then the Lord, when he's vanished, what happens? Here's the one week. Look at what happens right in the middle of that week. In the middle of the week. Do you know that in the middle of a Jewish week of, of a wedding celebration is when the rings are exchanged? And look at what this day is called. It's similar to the Jewish Valentine's Day, okay? It's the Jews' Valentine's Day. And it's said to be a great day for weddings. So literally on earth, this celebration of the greatest day for weddings takes place. Well, do you know why? Because they were in a three week of mourning where they were having no weddings. It just so happens that it lines up in our 50, that it's three days passes, and then the one week feast. Now in heaven, it's not gonna feel like a week to us. It won't matter what it's gonna feel like. But on earth, it'll be a period of time of seven days before the son of man, I believe this is when he returns, and this is when he starts his 40 days. When his 40 days are over and the Son of Man leaves, the Antichrist spirit, the raven is released, and so is the dove. The dove gives them that power, and then the raven attack will come. The Holy Ghost will have already left. And this is that seventh month, second attack, where they will now flee the land. They will no longer be in the land. They will be gone and no longer returning into the land for seven years until the Lord returns on Mount Zion. You, you following? This attack here is, the, is what we're talking about in Luke 21. In Luke's discourse, right here in Luke 21, you'll notice that when we've talked about this being the 40 days right here, okay? So before the red horse rider of nation against nation, you have a 40 day period that says, but before all these, okay? There's gonna be those during this period of time of the 40 days that are gonna be taken into prison and all these things. But we see where Jerusalem is being compassed about. Compassed about. You see this word compassed is the Greek for encircle and surround just like the sun one was from the Hebrew, this isn't the Hebrew, this is still the Greek. See, to encircle, a ring. They're going to surround all around. But what does it say? The desolation thereof is near. Okay? It's at hand. It's about to happen. But it doesn't happen during the 40 days. You see, it's right at the tail end. It says, for these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. This is now saying... They're being surrounded during the 40 days. But when the attack happens, it's now the beginning of vengeance that all things which are written may now be fulfilled. This is now saying when this attack does happen after the surrounding, the 14 years will begin. And we know for that to happen, the raven must be released when the 40 days of the Son of Man are over the raven is released and the dove. The dove stays for a short time, empowers them and leaves. And the raven begins. The attack, the surrounding took place. Now the attack once the 40 is over. This is how I see it. What's going to prove this is an attack breaking out. Not just a, a little thing here or a little couple rockets going here. No, this is destruction coming. This is where the destruction should come. This week, according to scripture. The reason why the Lord gave me the understanding so that I didn't take down that video that was after 50, the tribulation begins. I had no idea. If you had told me we had to go all the way to the end of July, I would have thought you you didn't know what you were talking about. I had no idea that the revelation that I had received with the understanding of Zechariah, that the start of the 50 was the 9th of Av. 
I was sure this was the end of the 50. But now we've been given greater understanding of the end of days ever since. We know why the fourth month, because they're observing. We know why the fifth, because they'll be attacked, but still stay in the land. We know why the seventh, because now they're going to be attacked while in the land. But at this point, now they'll be done. And they will remain gone for seven years. This is why, <coughs> excuse me, Daniel. Oh, I still have some coffee left. This is why Daniel 9 says, Daniel 9 verse 2, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood the books by the numbers, by the number of years, wherefore the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations, plural, of Jerusalem. That he would accomplish 70 years in the destructions, plural, of Jerusalem. How do you have destructions, plural, of Jerusalem in the 70th year? There's one. There's two. Hello. See, guys, the books have opened. We have understanding. You see, we can go back and look at this one from uh, Psalms again. Psalms 90 and 10, right? I use this one so much, it's, it shows you the 14 years. The days of our years are three score and 10. It means 70. And if by reason of strength, this strength means if you have the strength and victory to make it through, they're going to be what? 80. But yet is that strength, look at this. So to have that power to endure during those 10 years, it's going to be labor and sorrow, tribulation. Pain, travail, trouble, sorrow. This is tribulation. Labor, you see? It's tribulation. And sorrow, affliction, that's the tribulation. You see? And then you have soon, which is a short period of time, which I say is six months, cut off. And then we fly away. This is when Judah will fly for the in, away on the wings of an eagle for the final three and a half years. So you have 10, six months, and three and a half years. That's 14 years. But look at this said 70 years. Well, wait a second. Hold on. If it's 70 years and Israel turns 71 in March, well, shouldn't we already be in it? No, because this doesn't say Israel. It says for our years, the days of our life are 70 and if by strength they be 80. Well, if this is what I was telling you guys, I think in the last video, if I said, I was, I was talking about this with my daughter just before coming on too. And I said, okay, if I told you to count from 70 to 80, you're not going to count at 70. You're going to start at 71. Meaning what? You're not 71. I, I mean, you're still 70 until the day you turn 71. It seems, it seems trivial to, to talk about, but when there's 364, 365 days in between one number to the next, it becomes important to understand because people have a tough time trying to see what that means. You see like this right here, here's 70. Now I did it based on Israel. I should have just done it straight up on the years. Now we know where the Lord is counting from. Do you see why this whole circuit of the sun and the 19th year and all that coming to an end, why it's important? They're in their 70 according to the Lord, but this 70 ends when? I just showed you at the end of the 50th. On September 18th, the 70 years according to the Lord, God's count ends and they turn 71. So you're 71 for the whole year until you turn 72. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You haven't completed 10 years till the moment before you turn 81. You see, when do these 10 years end? In the spring. Well, I said spring. I guess now that would be summer to late summer of 2030. Okay, then you have a soon cut off, a short period of time. And by late fall into early winter, 
you have this six month period of time and then you have the fly away for a time time and half a time there's your six months there's the second half there's half a year one year two years there's two and a half years to right here right before turning 84. this is the time satan will rule having been cast down and then the lord returns for that final year and when that final year is over see fall of 30 31 32 bam at the end of 32 satan loses when messiah returns feet down on the mount of olives in 2033 fulfilling feet down on the mount of olives fulfilling the 14th year himself it's all in order brothers and sisters the whole thing is in order and this is why the intensity of our lives right now see guys this is kind of just almost a a talking it out type of thing right oh but i don't want to forget i told you guys i would show you that connection to when this period is over that the jews you know we see that you know here's day one day two day three i don't believe we're gone here i believe we'll still be here but it's possible okay then you got one two three in my personal thing i'm not telling you this is the escape i believe it's it's here okay in my personal opinion i'm not telling you it is i don't know the lord has not told me i've told you a million times i'm not a prophet i'm a teacher with revealing end time understanding but i don't have the day yet okay i believe it's here and then i told you there's this one week right that the lord's going to show up for these guys for a little bit and then he's going to vanish And he's going to be gone with us for a week for that wedding. Then he's going to return for the 40 days. Now, let me show you why we get this understanding too. There's been zero contradiction in what I've just shown you. But how can we prove this out even more? And not just in proving out that portion, but that in fact, he's coming three times. Watch this. Back to our brother Luke verse uh, chapter 12 uh, i think down in verse 36 watch this this portion about you must be ready starting in verse 35 let your loins be girded about and your lights burning as you yourselves like unto men that wait for their lord okay well if he's gonna if he's talking to them as if they're to be prepared when he's coming back they're they're waiting for the lord almost like he's what telling them ahead of time right remember i was showing you the first that third day that he might be here for a little bit during that day before he vanishes letting this group that he's choosing that's been preparing that he's been preparing and giving understanding to who knows right he's going to tell them be ready keep your lights burning as you yourselves like unto men that wait for their lord when he will return from the wedding this is a type and shadow of him saying when he returns from the wedding that when he comes and knocks they may open unto him immediately okay so he's talking about a group when he returns from a wedding there's a wedding when he returns from the wedding okay he's telling them here this is what i believe is the type and shadow he's telling them here Now, when I return from the wedding, better be ready. Let your lights be burning. So he's gone for the wedding, and boom, he returns after the seven days of the wedding. When he returns and knocks, they're to open unto him immediately. And then he tells them, Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he comes, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down and eat and he shall come and serve them this is the first time when he this is when he comes at the start of 40 days here's the second time when he comes at the end of seals here's the third time when he comes at the end of trumpets are you ready for this look at this this wasn't planned this just sparked my memory okay when he returns from the wedding that you may open unto him immediately didn't i say there was a connection to this that related to Luke 24 that we just went through. This whole vanishing, 
that if he vanishes, it's I believe it's the period of the seven days that he vanishes before he returns to fulfill the 40 days. And that when he vanishes, it's because he was gone to the wedding. And when he returns, it's to this group that's to open immediately. And that he will sit down with them and serve them. Are you ready for this? Let's go to, excuse me, Luke 24. Okay, there's the vanishing of the body on the third day. He's now there with them during that day. Then he vanishes. He's gone to the wedding. Then he's going to return from the wedding. Here he is having returned from the wedding. Are you ready for this? Why do your thoughts trouble you? Behold my hands, my feet. He spoke unto them, showed him his feet and his hands. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spoke unto you while I was yet with you, that all these things must be fulfilled which are written in the law of Moses. Hello, that's where we've been teaching from, right? And in the prophets. Hello, that's where we've been teaching from, right? And in the Psalms, hello, that's where we've been teaching from, right? Concerning me, he says. And then he opened unto them their understandings that they might understand the scriptures. Listen to this. Um, thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise again uh, and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at jerusalem um beginning at jerusalem and behold i send the promise of my father unto you but tarry here in the city until you be endued with power from on high what happens with this group watch this what happens with this group who is that you all just leave it for now. Okay. So what happens with this group? I wanted to show you. They were eating. They were eating. Here it is. Right here. And it came to pass. As he sat to eat with them. He took bread. And blessed it. And break it. And gave it to them. Isn't that what we just read? He says that when I come. He's going to. Where is it? That when he comes for this group in the first watch, after he comes from the wedding, what does he do? He says he's going to make them to sit down to eat and he's going to come forth and serve them. But when we go into Mark, check this out. Look at the resurrection story in Mark. First of all, you got this woman named Salome. Yes, she's a good woman here. But Salome is the one who is another, there's another Salome who beheaded John. Right, who had John beheaded. So why is she here in this picture? She is a good Salome here, but she is a type and shadow to let us know the time frame of the one who wasn't good. Okay, there's types and shadows in all of these things. Okay, you'll read the story here and you'll see it's completely different. But I want to show you here about eating. Listen to this. Here he says in Mark uh, 16, okay, this would be at the end of seals when he's coming at the time of the rapture. And after that, he appeared in another form unto two of them. Here comes the two witnesses time. And as they walked, they went into the country and they went and told it unto the residue. Who did they tell it to? The remaining ones, the ones who were left behind, but neither believed they them. Afterward, he appeared unto the 11. Okay, this is that type and shadow now of the 144,000. Afterward, he appeared unto the 11 and as they sat to eat, okay, he's not sitting to eat with them. As they sat to eat, he unbraided, he unleashed on them for their disbelief, okay? He unbraided with them, uh, with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. See, he, they're eating, he doesn't sit with them, and he doesn't break the bread and serve them. That only happens in Luke's, only in Luke's, do we see that he comes, sits with them, see, as he sat and ate with them, and he took the bread and broke it. You see, brothers and sisters, we have these things understood in their orders. And we've got this connection that appears to be taking place. One. Two, 
Three, escape. Seven days of wedding. Returning from the wedding for those that he's sat and ate with and broke bread. There it is. Forty days. When the forty days are over, the fourteen years begins. Hence, the Lord gave the revelation through understanding of Scripture after the fiftieth. Tribulation begins. The count of the fifty will start at the ninth of Av, at the first attack and partial dest destruction, which the Jews believe is also the Messiah's birthday, which is all right on target for the start of tribulation at the end, which will be the beginning. Brothers and sisters, this is long enough for today's video. I don't know that we're going to be doing another video, but no, you can go find this video. You guys can go find it for yourselves. Here's the channel name. Here's what this video is called. And within it, you'll be able to find the transcripts and read through the transcripts yourself. There is an awesome amount in this transcript, you know, that talks about this coming attack, okay? It talks about a coming attack. They're goading China and Iran, okay? They were discussing something that's already been planned. It wasn't something they were planning. This was a discussion in 2005 that he was a part of. And this is the transcript from the meeting talking about it in 2010. Okay? They want to stop China before they get too powerful. But you see, uh, for the use, Middle East again, uh, over the conflict. I want to show you just a couple things. Uh, and then I'm going to end it uh, here. It's talking about they wanted they want half of the population of the world to be destroyed so that it, it's what they call a more manageable period. And it's going to be a nuclear exchange. And I believe there will be a limited nuclear exchange. There will be some sort of ceasefire that was spoken about that they anticipated a quick ceasefire, but not before millions had already died, particularly in the Middle East. OK, and he says, so we're probably talking about Israel here. The population of Israel being sacrificed. Also places within Syria, Lebanon, uh, possibly Iraq, definitely in Iran. You know, the towns and major cities and so forth. And then a ceasefire, here it goes, before it goes full out. And the, the guy, Bill, that you saw in the video, he says, a cease? Wow, sorry. I'm I, I, sorry I'm interrupting you, he says. I do apologize. He says, but a ceasefire before it goes full out? He says, yes. It's like some game of poker. You know, they already know what hand has been dealt. They know what's going to be dealt. They know that the scenario that could be brought about can be ended and a ceasefire. So we'll have a ceasefire. And during this time of the ceasefire, the events will start to take off. That's exactly what we've been talking about, brothers and sisters. Do you remember this guy, even? We talked about him as well through Project Looking Glass. He talked about it being like a game of poker. You know, they know that this funnel is all directed into one final endgame now. And there's nothing they could do that could change the results of what's to come. And these results of what's to come is understood in their game that, quote unquote, they're about to play. It talked about the plague being released on China. It talks about a short nuclear, tactical nuclear exchange in the Middle East with Israel being sacrificed before all out war of World War III breaks out that will either be led by China, but I believe personally the bear is, 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 uh, is Russia. Hence, you'll have the time of Russia and Iran working together in World War III breaking out. Guys, it's all talked about. Look at this one, and I'll end with this. And then he says, people will now be living in total fear. Let me start right here. This will create the conditions where bi biological weapons can be used. And there, uh, you've got to imagine a world now in post-nuclear war or limited nuclear war, because of the, he's talking about the only one in the Middle East, in chaos, financial collapse, so anybody that's not a Christian that plans on being here during the tribulation, well, guess what? You can short the market. Get ready to short it now. Totalitarian governments coming into place. 
He says, people living in complete fear and panic, just like we read in Luke 21. This is what's going to happen next. You'll have a scenario, and this again was talked about. People will become more controllable with more coming out in connection about what's going to happen because their own safety and security has now been placed firmly in the hands of those who are saying they can protect it. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying, right, guys? Over and over and over again. The wording that's in this transcript of two unbelieving, okay? They're not Christians. They don't believe in the Bible. But in one part, he says, oh, kind of like those that, that think, you know, like, oh, this is like Armageddon. And the one guy says, yes, no, it's not Armageddon. It's just the start of tribulation before the 14 years begins. It's, a, it's amazing, amazing, amazing. But you can find this transcript in it, right? Oh, you know, I said that was the last one. Let me make this the last one. So probably more like Iran because it's Iran that's going to bring that nuclear tactical nuke that's going to drop first because they've been agged on. Okay. So it'll be Iran to stop from going any further. Then we're talking about an exchange of weapons and then a ceasefire before we have something that's no longer confined to a geographical area. What's it called? After this short Israel Iran nuclear exchange, right? Very short war that we're talking about. This one that we're saying, I believe, is coming this week, according to scripture. That once this one start uh, uh, stops, there's an ex there's an exchange of weapons that comes from it, guys. This is all stuff talked about. Here's the New Yorker after Trump unveiled the peace deal, right? The whole deal of the century. It's connected to watch this right here given the history of conflict in the area getting all palestinian factions to surrender weaponry to surrender weaponry despite israel keeping all of its all of its arms will be an extraordinary extraordinarily difficult all right this is in the peace deal that trump has that <laughs> that Ehud Olmert is working with a boss on that has a surrender of weapons that's part of this thing that was talked about 10 years ago after a short exchange of war that would relate to the fifth month before the end one comes just like all of these things spoken about in scripture over and over and over again look at this 2 Kings 25 watch this as I end this all, we talked about this last year. We were excited. Tabitha, Disciple Tabitha brought it to my attention. Because last year we thought 2019, so 19 was appropriate. I just showed you now we're in 19. 2020 doesn't start until the 14 years begins in the Lord's eyes. We've got chapter 19 connected to the end of Psalms. We've got uh, 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 19 of Deuteronomy that starts the 50 day count. You see, and look at what we have here in the fifth month on the seventh day of the month, which is the 19th year of King Nebuchadnezzar. See, fifth month, seventh day. I'm going to close that out. Fifth month. Okay. Fifth month, seventh day. That's tomorrow, by the way, in the 19th year. Whoa, whoa, there's connections going on. But this is only the first one. You guys can read Second Kings for yourself. You can see it keeps going on and they put Gedali in place. This is what we were saying. Is Gedalia going to be Benny Gantz or is Gedalia actually going to be, or is it going to be both of them working together? Who is the Gedalia character? Is it going to be maybe Ehud Omer who's bringing this peace deal together? Well, then whoever this Gedalia character is going to be, he's going to be killed. And who's going to get him? There it is. Ishmael is going to come from the north. Assad, the raven, is going to, the lion is going to come from the north. 
and is going to attack again because after the attack of the fifth month and the peace deal that comes after it, they think that Israel is going to be allowed to be rebuilt and Syria and those with them will have nothing to do with it. They will not allow that to happen. And so in the seventh month, Ishmael comes and kills a whole bunch more and Gedaliah. And they will now flee out of the land once and for all, be taken captive, be killed, be living in the wilderness. And it will be just like what we read in Luke 21. Brothers and sisters, it appears... We're here. Everything the Lord has revealed brings us to this period in time right here. I kind of pray that we're wrong, but I kind of pray that we do have the understanding that it's not based on this other count uh, from the, the other moon way of counting, but I believe we're actually on the Hebrew count with everything that's been revealed. So with that, guys, pray for family and friends. Pray for Israel. Pray for the Jews. Time is short. I'm looking forward to seeing you all in your with your families in mere days. I love you guys. God bless you. God bless your families. Bye for now.